We are very pleased and always very excited to welcome back the Champagne Lady and founder of the New Zealand Cap Foundation, Anne Batley Burton. Now, last time she gave us champagne, this time she's brought along one of her pussycats. Um, Anne, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please give her a round of applause. And who have you brought here today? Well, I've brought MacGyver. And contrary to her name, his, her name, she's actually a girl. Right. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> she looks amazing. really young. She does, but she's actually, I think she's probably about 13 years old. Oh. She came out of the bush as a little stray, and I thought she was a kitten, but she never grew. So she's tiny. And she's been with us now about eight or nine years. So she's doing very great. Cute. Mm. Very cute. Have okay. you always been a huge cat lover? I have, yes. I was brought up with cats, um, not so much when I was really young, but after Mum flipped the coop, as my father puts it, we were allowed the cats. <laughs> she wasn't that keen on all the cats around the place. But um, the moment she left, <laughs> they started coming. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly we've seen through Real Housewives of Auckland your love and support for cats. So what is the Cat Foundation all about? Well, I set up the New Zealand Cat Foundation. I've been looking after stray cats for a long, long time. Um, and a few years ago, because the whole thing was getting a little bit out of hand, my husband said to me, look, you've got to set up a charity so people can donate and, and get some money for this. And uh, so anyway, I set that up oh, over two years ago now. And it was set up to de-sex, which is so important, de-sex yeah. and care for our stray cats. Um, and I've actually set up a sanctuary where I look after unhomeable cats for the rest of their lives. We care for them. But, you know, one of the things that I'm really, really passionate about is that at the moment there's a lot of controversy they're trying to push through compulsory microchipping. microchipping yeah, and what's yes. your thoughts on that? And whilst in principle that sounds like a great idea, in fact, what it really is, it's council-sanctioned killing of stray cats. That's what it amounts to. And it means that any cat, if it's compulsory microchipping, any cat that is picked up, that has had the unfortunate mishap to become stray, because through abandonment or whatever, getting lost, it will be put down. There's no wriggle room there? No, and I don't think people realise that um, and that would be a tragedy and particularly there's a lot of cats in colonies where a lot of volunteers like myself were under the Community Cat Coalition. We look after these three cats, we get them de-sexed and we care for them and they're fed just like any other domestic cat. It would be totally wrong for them all to be exterminated. And this is what we saw you doing on Real Housewives, didn't you? Yes. You, you ventured out with, Mich was it Michelle? Who did you no, take no. with you? Oh, no, I took Michelle to the Pussy oh, Palace, yeah. which is my own. Well, yes, I've got about 150 it. cats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now I took um, Julia um, to feed the Parnell Pussies, mm. which is the Rose Garden cats. That was a bit of an eye-opener for her. I'm sure it was a bit of an eye-opener mm. for her. What can we do to help then, I guess? If, you know, this microchipping issue is obviously close to your heart, yes. the Cat Foundation close yes. to your heart. What can we do to help you out? What I would love is for the word to get out there that compulsory microchipping is not something that is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And basically, you just need to de-sex, 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 and we need to educate the community, starting from you know, child or upwards, but taking care for your animals and taking responsibility for them. And it will be something that will be transitional, but, you know, we should be managing these stray cats uh, yeah. on the street by de-sexing and caring for them. De-sexing, that's And also, one. the New Zealand Cat Foundation, but New Zealand catfoundation.org.nz. <laughs> we need donations and we need volunteers. We need help. Right, we've got that on screen. People can go and check it out. Now, I want to ask you in a moment about Real Housewives because the grand finale is coming up. I want yes. to know if you do a season two, but don't tell me just yet. Okay. Let's just save that one. Okay, we are back with Anne Batley Burton and now we get to talk about Real Housewives of Auckland because this is very exciting. The finale is on tomorrow night. It's been an, uh, it's been an incredible journey. Have you enjoyed every moment of it? I have loved every moment of it. In fact, I don't want it to end. Really? <laughs> so, you would, so you would do it again then? Oh, yes, absolutely. No question about it. It's been fantastic. OK, what has been the hardest part of the show? Because I guess you don't know until it starts screening on TV how the country's going to react. Now that it has aired, what's been the hardest part? Uh, well, I haven't found it particularly difficult, actually. I suppose the hardest part for me is that I've already got a full-time business going and, you know, so many other things on the go that uh, it's been very difficult because I've just had to just sort of make my life about twice as big <laughs> as I possibly, you know, up at four in the morning instead of six, that type of thing. Gosh. Um, 
And, you know, at first my father, he wasn't that keen on it. I was actually, I mean, at 94, he's still sort of, you know, running my life, telling me what to do. <laughs> You're not doing that, little doll. Absolutely not. <laughs> I thought I might have been disinherited for a moment there. That was a bit of a worry. Well, you wouldn't want that. Because you're coming across, the thing is, yeah, exactly. The thing is, you're coming across quite well. I mean, you've had the least conflict probably from anyone yeah. in the show, although you did have a weak cry. What do you cry. mean, quite? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you were a bit of a, you were saying some nasty things about a certain book launch last week, I recall. But you, yes. you did have a little bit of a cry last week, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. You and yeah. Gilda? Yeah, yeah. No, I got a little bit emotional about that. Probably because, as far as Gilda was concerned, and I don't think she'll mind me saying this, you know, I had a bit of a pre preconceived idea about her, which a lot of people did. Yeah. We just heard things and seen her around town a little bit. And I suddenly felt really bad because she's been a little sweetheart, actually, as far as I'm concerned, anyway, in the show. And we've got on really well. Yeah. And I just suddenly felt that I needed to say something to her and just say, hey, Gilda, you know, contrary to what I actually thought at the start, You're I really okay. got to like you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'm a bit emotional about things like that. It's just like telling my father I love him or something like that. I find that hard to sort of say things. So, of course, I got a little bit upset. <laughs> well, it made for good telly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I was watching a couple of weeks ago, though, and a couple of weeks ago, and it felt to me like Louise Wallace was slipping back into her broadcasting days and wanted to be a, an interviewer again. <laughs> well, she can be. <laughs> hard to shake off. <laughs> yeah, no, did you get that feeling sometimes working with her, that I she do, was interviewing yes. you? Yes, honestly, she can be like that. Mm. She's, she's a little tough cookie, that one. But, but brilliant. you know, she's my bestie. I nice. love her. I love Lou. We get on like a house on fire. Probably because we're both Scorpios, of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, we love the show. It's actually quite sad that it's coming to an end. What am I going to do with my Tuesday night? I know. There's so many firsts that you've done as well. You've had all like the first, what was it, like, the, um, the first girls' trip, the first... Nude model. Nude model. Oh, yeah, the first... <laughs> this, 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 oh, yeah, the first spray tan. Oh, <laughs> yes. spray tan. Yes. The first, well, we should show this clip. Have we got time to show this clip? Yeah, let's just have a quick look at this clip from like, <laughs> oh, a couple gee, weeks ago. Thanks. <laughs> I've got a this is Ben, Benjamin's uh, model today. I didn't know where to look, so I kept my eyes firmly fixed on his face. I didn't think Annie's going to be faced by this. I mean, after all, she's had seven fiancés. She's seen enough naked men not to get scared. You thought I was going to show you crying. It's much better having you looking at that. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. <laughs> Quite an experience. Are you trying oh. to blase? Like, oh, yeah, I've seen Well, it look, I tell you what. No, the thing was, I literally, and this is not a word of a lie, I thought it was some streaker that had come on off the street. <laughs> I did. I thought, oh, my God, they've obviously heard we're in here and some nutcase has decided to come in and shock us. And I thought, oh, no. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. But I cannot wait for the grand finale. And let's hope there's a season two as well. And yes. thank you so much. It has been a pleasure for joining us again. Uh, the grand finale of Real Housewives of Auckland screens tomorrow night, 8.30 on Bravo.